Hey, what's going on, guys? KWG here. So a couple things I wanted to say is, hey, this is my wife. Say hello. Good morning. And uh, today's video is actually going to be about us going over the comment section of my previous video because some of you guys have some weird takes and uh, I want to give you guys some of my thoughts on that. So let's just jump into it. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about in today's video is the object of a pay to win. Now, I got a couple comments on this in my previous video where I spoke about the new roadmap and new concerns, which you guys can go ahead and click up here in some way, shape or form to be able to go watch that video if you guys want. First things first, let's go into the most recent comment that I feel like would help us to be able to have this conversation. So this comment actually comes from Studies in Flux, who is a relatively you know regular in my comment section. So hey, thank you so very much. He states, or they state, it would be useful to know what pay to win means to you in 202, which is what they were talking about in my previous video, where I said that the AC scratch, uh, support scratch may or may not be pay to win. But they then go on to state, that I have this pay to advance where my definition is if two players are equally skilled start the game. If a player who plays extra is likely to be ahead of a, of a player who owes only the lowest tier subscription or game pack, then it is pay to advance. So to me, every one of the big PC MMORPGs are pay to advance since you can get the base game or base sub and then pay more on top of that for a mechanical advantage, however slight that might be. Now, first of all, I don't really understand what any of the big PC MMORPGs means in this case because subscription based models are not pay to advance models. Um, and I think that's, you know, a little bit of a discrepancy there. Subscription based models are generally, you will get access to the game by paying for the subscription, you know, whereas a pay to advance model is similar to this, but you have to understand that there is an innate advantage that you're getting by paying over it. Now, pay to advance, like let's say some things in RuneScape, you know, where if you I don't know. I don't know if this is even still a thing, but there was a part of the subscription at one point. Maybe I'm just going crazy here. You know, some Mandela Mandela effect nonsense where at one point, if you paid for the subscription, then you had a chance of not losing your gear whenever you got PVP'd and stuff like that. Like those are pay to advance, basically making it so you did gain an advantage, but pay to subscription models or subscription based models. There is no mechanical advantage. The only thing is, is you have access more to the game. So that's just something I don't agree with there. But I, I understand where they're coming from. They also then go on to say is I reserve pay to win for blatant games that block you from the best at a piece of content without paying for boosts. This includes either games or the best and saw item is a cash up only item or it's non tradable or the grind is so bad without boosters that it's mathematically impossible to grind for the most powerful state in the game before the developers release a new update that introduces more stuff on the gear treadmill. Similar to my pay to advance interpretation, I don't count base subscription or demo unlock payments. Now, this is where I'll begin to agree with this comment very heavily because pay to win generally means exactly that. There is something that is available in the cash shop that will then basically lock you out of progressing by normal means where you only have to pay you know money for it now let's say if you would have to pay 15 dollars for an upgrade or the chance to be able to upgrade your gear whereas it would have taken you three months to be able to upgrade each individual piece of gear in the same time frame for free that is generally pay to win because you do gain an advantage in a lot of these games all these games that do that do offer some pvp sake you know, and some other forms that will then give you an innate advantage. The idea of AC scratch or the AC support uh, scratch being pay to win is again, it's a little bit twofold. First, I may personally, I think that's unfair. And I don't think I conveyed that properly in my previous video. What I also will then say it's no, it's not pay to win. Now let's start with why it's not pay to win. The reason why it's not pay to win, first of all, is because it is still a random chance system. Even if you pay money, you do not have the opportunity to get whatever the best augments out of that possible. First of all, a pay to win system would guarantee you this, you know, some sort of upgrade or advantage, whereas this gotcha system that they have in PSO prevents it from being pay to win because it's still random chance. Now you can pay an exorbitant amount of money to be able to guarantee these items. That's too risky for most people. Now, the other thing is, is that these items are therefore tradable via the market for other players. So a free to play player can still take advantage of all of these systems. The only things that then they have to do is farm for the Meseta. Now, somebody then in the comment section previously was like, well, then no, that is pay to win because now the person who's selling it on the personal shop then gains the advantage by having more Meseta. But then I think about it this way. What does having more Meseta mean in terms of the pay to win system? It means that more than likely you're going to then use them instead of to buy stuff on the player market 
And that only helps the economy. That doesn't necessarily help, you know, you be pay to win because it's not like you can use Masetta on anything else. So again, don't think it's pay to win. However, I do think it's unfair. And the reason why I think it's unfair is because in the Japanese version of PSO2, for the longest time, we've had SG scratches, SG support scratches. And basically in PSO2, you know, when it came, the game came global, that never existed. They were all AC available. So I feel like that system is incredibly unfair considering we still have all of these means where they keep releasing these AC scratches. Let us use our star gems more often on other things because at this point, the only things that I can use on my, my star gems for are for the fashion scratches. And with as bloated as those scratches are, it's almost not necessary for me to even roll on them in the first place, especially with the free daily scratch that we get. So it's like, why not give us a more of a reason to be able to use our star gems on the actual support scratch that would actually allow people to then trade or be more willing to convert their AC to star gems because that is still a feature that is available in the game despite the inability to buy star gems out right now, right? That would give more people a reason to actually want to continue to log into the game to do the events that give you the star gems in the first place. And then it would then allow for this additional currency alongside Masetta and AC to want to have a use because eventually you're going to have the players who then have everything that their hearts desire and these bloated, you know, fascia scratches give them more reasons to use the star gems because that's a reward that we get. But if there's no reason to use them, then why do I want more of this reward that becomes useless? At least that's my opinion on this, but I don't necessarily think that the support scratch that we're getting here is pay to win. It is definitely unfair and it shouldn't be AC, in my opinion, but it's not pay to win. And with the Resident Desert update coming out, Sega definitely wants that feedback. For example, another one of the comments that I want to be getting in my video was, is that $20 packs are still too expensive because indie games are also $20 for a lot more game. Now, I'm actually going to stop that you know, thought process right there, because the idea of a $20 game for an indie game is that you have this entire development team who's out there, maybe five, six to 10 people, and they're developing a game. They price their game most of the time less than what their profit margin will be. And it's a $20 entry fee. They sell X amount of copies. And then because they've been able to sell those many copies, it then becomes to a profit because so many people bought their game. However, they still have to pay all of their employees, all of the people working on that, all the licensings and stuff that they have to use to be able to make the game. Whereas Sega, they're making all of their games in-house, but here's the thing. They begin the game at a profit loss. Why? Because they start their free-to-play game at an entry fee of zero dollars. The idea of Fantasy Star being the way that it is, is that you can actually play the entire game for literally no dollars. No monies, no, no, nothing, no rupees, not even lamp oil, bombs, rope. You don't need to do any of that because they don't do credit anyway. Yes, they do. But that's an entirely different thing. Anyway, um, at the end of the day, you cannot, con you know, have a free to play game and compare that to a 20 dollars game because they have different forms of monetization. And that's where I wanted to go with that monetization systems being cheaper. Good thing. AC support scratch tickets being what they are, turn them into star gems, make star gems more worthwhile, and then also make it so that way your AC systems aren't entirely bloated because then yes, eventually you then begin to dip into the pay to win systems, even though it's not a pay to win game, but you have so many things that require money that it might as well then be pay to win. But like I said just a little bit ago, with the Redem Desert update coming out and them asking for that feedback, this is the perfect time to be able to give us that feedback. Or not give us, but give Sega that feedback. I mean, yeah, you can give it to me too because I'll make a video on it. But yes, this is the perfect time to be able to go out and say, hey, here we are. Give the feedback. Do it in the proper fashions. And just do me a favor don't go out into my comment section and fucking bash me because i'm saying something like hey man uh sega's doing good or sega's giving us the the proper levels of communication or anything like that because i'm just a messenger dude i don't deserve that and i'm nine times out of ten i read every single comment that i have ever gotten in my comment section every single one 
without a shadow of a doubt. So don't direct the hate at me. Like I said, just the messenger guys. But anyway, thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay awesome, stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.